Uh, we have a fine uh, program for you tonight. Uh, Carol Kane will be joining us in the next half hour. It is both uh, an honor and a pleasure to welcome my first guest tonight. If you've ever seen a film that he has made, you're no doubt a fan. Uh, the list is awesome. It happened one night. Mr. Deeds goes to town. You can't take it with you. Mr. Smith goes to Washington. It's a wonderful life. Meet John Doe, Arsenic and Old Lace, and many, many more. Uh, welcome one of the greatest motion picture directors ever, Mr. Frank Capra. Thank you very much for being here. What it's a, a happy show. Here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's a Wonderful. pleasure to meet you. Uh, that list of uh, films that we read off in the introduction. Yeah. Uh, uh, they're all good. They're okay. Yeah, they're all okay. <laughs> <laughs> when, no. you were, when you were working on those projects, did you have any uh, feeling that these things were going to uh, su sustain or withstand the test of time? No. As they say? Actually, we, th we, th we thought they were like new newspapers, you know, you read them and throw them away. We didn't have. Uh, have any idea they'd ever do value later on. Mm -hmm. Does it, when you see them still today, does it, is there anything uh, that just amazes you about them? Yeah. <laughs> I look at them, I just, they're damn good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now you were, um, your, your parents were uh, immigrants, right, from Sicily? Yes, and uh, you were a poor, poor background, poor kid. Yep. Uh, did, how did they feel when you started having overwhelming success in the, in the area of motion pictures? Well, I'll tell you, uh, my mother, she was a hard, hard person, and, uh, and, she, and she, did, she didn't, uh, unless you worked, you, know, you, you were a bum. If you drank or anything else, you were a bum. Now, she didn't think I was ever working. She'd ask me, what are you doing? Well, I'm writing. She said, well, who would pay you for writing what? So uh, she kept saying to me, Frankie, when are you going to find a job? <laughs> a job to her mm -hmm. was a, a hammer, uh, 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 you know, a saw or something, or, or a hoe. Well, she, she, she kept on, this on all, all through the time. Now, uh, when, when I got finished with uh, Mr. Smith Go Goes to Washington, I took her to the preview of it. She was the first time she knew what I was doing. And, here, and I took her to a seat, and I was sure going to knock her right on her can, you know, she doesn't want to. <laughs> well, she sat through that whole thing with just a while. Uh, and after we got through, people applauded and everything else. Here was my name and my picture on, in the hall. I said, Mom, what would you think of that? She just says, Frankie, when are you going to find a job? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, <laughs> did, um, uh, we're going to take a look at now uh, a scene from uh, It Happened One Night. Uh, this is Clark Gable, and I believe this is going to be the famous hitchhiking scene. So we'll take a look at this uh, from It Happened One Night, and then we'll come back and talk uh, more with Frank okay. Capra. Watch the, the monitors here, if you will. Oh, that's amazing. Hmm? Yeah, but it's no good, though, if you haven't got a long face to go with it. Here comes the car. Okay, now watch me. I I'm going to use number one. Keep your eye on that thumb, baby, and see what happens. I still got my eye on the thumb. Well, something must have gone wrong. Oh. Try number two. Mm. Well, when you get to 100, wake me up. I think I'll write that book after all. Yeah, I'll think of all the fun you had, though. Uh, you mind if I try? You? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're such a smart Alec. Nobody knows anything but you. 
I'll stop the car and I won't use my thumb. What are you going to do? The system on my own. Was, was that a little racy for the Times? Oh, not too racy. Yeah. No, uh, but just a... Uh, now, we had racier than, than yeah. that. Uh, is it true that this motion picture was one that nobody really wanted to make or nearly did not get made? Absolutely so. Uh, uh, five uh, women turned it down, and two men turned it down, and finally, we said, we gave it up, the hell with it. Mm -hmm. no, let's not make it. But uh, an order comes from, uh, from MGM's boss, who was the boss of all the other bosses, and he who, says... No, who was this at the time? Uh, 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 who, who was it? Uh, I'll think of his name in a minute. Uh, uh, I'm lousy on names. He, sa he said, uh, Harry, you've got to make that picture now. He says, why? He says, because I, I want to I punish a boy down here that's getting a little... Uh, he wants a little too much money, and I want to punish him... But but the punishment meant sending him down to Poverty Row to let him make a picture down there to see how it was. Siberia, I see. Uh -huh. So uh, uh, that's how we had to make the picture. We had to make the picture so that uh, 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 the, the, the man could be sent to Siberia. Mm -hmm. That was the idea. Going to teach him a lesson. Teach him a lesson. Yeah. If he wants more money, let him see what they, how, how it is, what he's missing up here. Yeah. Well, that's the way. That's the way things happen. That's the way things were made in those days. <laughs> uh, is, this is the film where uh, Clark Gable appeared without his undershirt at one point? That's and, right. And, uh, he appeared without his undershirt at one time. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, most of the haberdashers went get broke after that. They yeah. couldn't send him back. We, we have to uh, 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 pause here, uh, Frank. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Uh, Frank Capper and I will return. <laughs> is here. Carol Kane will join us a little bit later. Uh, the names that we were uh, trying to come up with, one was Louis Mayer, Louis Mayer at MGM, uh -huh. and, and the other was Harry Cohn. Harry Cohn, was, who was your boss at uh, he Columbia? He was my boss at Columbia, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's get back to Gable now. Wh when we saw him in that uh, clip, is that anything like the guy was in real life? Yes, that's the, that is the real uh, Gable. He was uh, actually allowed to make only one picture, and that was it, in which he played himself. Mm -hmm. Which he, there he is, just as you see him. That, that's the kind of a guy he was in real life. And that's why, uh, that's why he loved him so much throughout the picture. He played himself. He wasn't, in other words, he wasn't acting. That's wonderful when you get actors who don't act, yeah. but who play just as they, as they would uh, uh, if there were no cameras around. Um, an actor who was, uh, in your estimation, and, and forgive me if I'm putting words in your mouth, uh, who was the best at that, was it um, Jimmy Stewart? Yes, Jimmy Stewart, I think, is the best uh, uh, actor uh, that uh, makes the audience feel that, that he is not acting. Mm -hmm. He's just living whatever he's... That, and uh, that's why he's so effective. He's just a wonderful actor. I, I read an interesting quote you had on that topic. You said, when, when you look at Jimmy Stewart on the screen, you, say, you don't say, uh, good heavens, what a great performance. What you say? Yes, it's, it's not what a great performance, but what a great person, what a great man he is, and what a great what, what, whatever he, whatever he, he was. Yeah. Uh, not a, a, not a performance. When you say performance, that means you are doing a performance of somebody else. You are playing somebody else. But but uh, Jimmy Stewart gets gives you the idea that it, there is no performance. He is playing himself. That's the part. Mm -hmm. He's living that part. Yeah. Is there anybody working today that has that same quality that you feel to that extent? Very, very few. Very, very few. They're not allowed to do that. They're, they're really not allowed to do that. They're, 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 it's more, it's more um, they, they have to act. Now, to act, anybody can act, but very few cannot act and be, and, and do, and be, be their marvelous self. Yeah. Just... Be yourself. What about uh, Gary Cooper? I'm trying oh, to I'm do sorry. myself. And, and, uh, you know, oh, you're doing a fine job. 
Yeah. <laughs> Playing the part of Frank Capra. Yes. Uh, Stump stumbling around. No, like no, 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 no. Uh, tell me about Gary Cooper. I know we've we got to go away for station identification, but let's get started talking about Mr. Cooper. Gary Cooper? Yes, sir. I'll tell you one thing. All the women loved this guy. Oh, God, he was the, great, the greatest uh, man. He, he, he didn't talk much. He didn't talk at all. To get two words out of him, that was something. All right, let me, I, I got to get some words in myself. Let me interrupt yeah. here. We'll pause for station identification, come back, talk more with Frank Capra. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Uh, Carol Kane will be joining us a little bit later. Also, uh, Don Washington uh, is here tonight. Uh, tomorrow night, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of NBC, Grant Tinker, will be here. Um, actress Margot Kidder and uh, comedian Harry Anderson. A fine program for you folks tomorrow night. Uh, every year about this time, you see one of your uh, movies. Uh, it's a good holiday. Well, it is a holiday film. It's a uh, wonderful life. And we're going to take a look at uh, s some of that now. And uh, this, I think, is where Jimmy Stewart meets his guardian angel. And uh, take a look at the monitors at home. As always, use your televisions. And uh, we'll come back and talk with uh, Frank Capra about this. Time to get some stylish underwear. Wife gave me this on my last birthday. <laughs> I passed away in it. <laughs> oh, Tom Sawyer's drying out too. You should read the new book Mark Twain's writing now. How did you happen to fall in? I didn't fall in. I jumped in to save George. You what? George. To save me. Well, I did, didn't I? You didn't go through with it, did you? Go through with what? Suicide. Oh, it's against the law to commit suicide around here. Yeah, it's against the law where I come from, too. Oh. Where do you come from? Heaven. <laughs> right away, quickly. That's why I jumped in. I knew if I were drowning, you tried to save me. You see, you did. And that's how I saved you. Uh, uh, very funny. Your lips bleeding, George. Yeah. I got a bust in the jaw in answer to a prayer a little bit ago. Oh, no, 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 George. I'm the answer to your prayer. That's why I was sent down here. How'd you know my name? Oh, I know all about you. I've watched you grow up from a little boy. What are you, a mind reader or something? <laughs> well, who are you then? Clarence Oddbody, AS2. Oddbody. AS2, what, what, what's that AS2? Angel, second class. <laughs> is that, um, would that be your favorite movie that you directed? Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, what about Mr. Smith Goes to Washington? Another one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now tell me about that one. That, um, Jimmy Stewart also that in that. What kind a, of reaction did that get that when it first came quite out? That has uh, quite a history, and uh, I'm afraid it might be a little long for you to hear. But we were in trouble with that film. Uh, we showed it in Washington to 4,000 four, four people in the, at a great auditorium, and they walked out on the thing, and they went thumbs down and all, all kinds of things the first time. And we thought we had, uh, you know, a very bad, very, very bad show. Nobody in Washington liked it. And the reviews were terrible in the, in the, in the Washington press. The Washington press, you must understand, is not the same press as there is around the world. They're a real high elite press. They have a press club all their own. They can make or break anybody in Washington, but nobody else can. So they really have a, have a high opinion of themselves. And when they saw this picture come in, into their, in, 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 into their preserves, where they were, where they, where they're a big power, press, power of the press, wonderful power, big power, right there. 
and they saw on the screen something come in that had much more power than their press. Wow. Well, I can understand how the politicians might object to it, but I, I'm not uh, sure. Oh, no, the, not the politicians so much as it object it, as the press itself. Did they feel that you had scooped them on, on no, uncovering they something? they felt, or? suddenly they felt a tremendous thing has, has arisen that we don't know anything about that overshadows us, overpowers us. Mm -hmm. Film press, film, film power. And they first, the first time they saw it, film power. And they didn't like it at all. Yeah. So they gave the film a hell of a thing. Uh, now, uh, another thing, the, the war was on, and we got a big, long telegram from our, our ambassador in, uh, in uh, uh, London uh, that uh, we shouldn't show this picture at all in, in, in Europe. Oh, don't show it because it, 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 it's a picture that could be made by the Nazis in, uh, in Germany, and uh, the, the Allies would, uh, would, would really uh, not like this picture at all. Please don't show this picture. In this the is the wire from Joseph Kennedy? Joseph Kennedy. Joseph, father of the Kennedys. And uh, uh, um, this really f floored us. So, so I, I, you know, I made a great pitch to, to, to people at Beth Columbia. Don't, don't, don't listen to politicians. Don't do what politicians. If you give the politicians the power to say to you, don't run this picture, it'll never end. All the, they, they can always make you quit. Now, all right, it's made, it's made in, in Germany, and they're made where it's lousy, but do not uh, uh, suppress it because the politicians said, anyhow, we didn't. Yeah. And uh, How did that make you feel personally after putting your... Uh, I was scared. I was scared. Yeah. I was like, Geez, what the hell have we produced here? A mo monster? A monster? But uh, in about three years, I was in the Army, and I, and I, we, we, we got the, we got the, uh, the top... Uh, the t the, we got the top of two, it was just perfectly wonderful. The Germans gave the French 30 days to play Western pictures, just 30 days, and they, were, they could choose their own films. Now, practically, the, the, the French practically included uh, uh, it's a, this this uh, um, uh, uh, this picture with the uh, uh, with with Jimmy Stewart in every picture in every film they wanted to see one. But one theater played it every day for 30 days. This is Mr. got a full crowd. Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Mr. Smith yeah. goes to Washington. And every time he talked about liberty, they got a big, a big a tremendous applause. Every, uh, and, and this this disproved everything that that man had to say. Yeah, they, I guess they were nervous because you were getting close to showing that it's possible that there is corruption that's, on all levels of government. It. Huh? That's it. That's yeah. right. And, uh, but... It, but uh, I'll tell you that word freedom. When that came on, when that came on in France, I just—I mean, the French just uh, knocked the house down. Uh, what are you doing now? Do you ever get an urge to to get back into active production of films? Yeah, yeah. You do. Uh, that would be great. Uh, is there is there any possibility of that happening? In the, in just the urges, my friend. Just urges. Just urges. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a delight to meet you, sir. I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Frank Capper, ladies and gentlemen. Good stuff, Frank. Right there. Uh, we'll be right back with Carol Kane.